You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 29th of November and I'm Roland from Milford. The new COVID variant was the focus of last week and will likely continue to be until we better understand it. What we know so far is that the strain Omicron has approximately 50 mutations relative to the Delta variant. Now it has 10 to 50 mutations as it relates to transmissibility, therefore it is considered highly contagious. Now there's no evidence to suggest it's any more dangerous than the Delta variant, however we still don't know at this stage how effective the vaccines are on this variant. As of now, we know it's in over 5 countries, however this too is likely to increase. Governments globally have quickly responded. The UK, for example, has introduced new restrictions, banning flights from a number of countries, as has Israel and even Australia. We'd expect most countries to ban flights from South Africa in the coming weeks in an effort to stem the spread. Domestically, non-Australian citizens who've been to nine countries, including South Africa, cannot enter Australia. If you have travelled to one of these nine countries, you'll have to isolate for 14 days. Also, flights to these countries have been suspended. Australian retail sales were released on Friday and materially exceeded expectations. Sales grew 4.9% month on month in October compared to expectations of 2.5%. Clothing, footwear and personal accessories were up 28% month on month and department stores were up 22%. New South Wales and ACT showed the strongest month-to-month increase, somewhat unsurprisingly. Vic only grew 3%, but it wasn't open for much of October, so you'd expect a strong November print. The minutes of the Fed's early November policy meeting were released, which revealed that some participants are worried about inflation and therefore are pushing for a faster rundown in its monthly asset purchases. They still believe inflation to be transitory, but admit it's higher than expected and will take longer to normalise than previously anticipated. Turning to equity news, given the outbreak of Omicron, equity markets sold off aggressively in the latter half of the week. The small ordinaries fell over 2% on Friday, and the ASX 200 fell 1.7%. The Nasdaq also fell 2% on Friday. Travel companies were one of the worst performing sectors, with Flight Center off 7.5%, Webjet off 5%, and Qantas off 5.5%. Email payments, who have been under investigation by the Central Bank of Ireland, received some positive correspondence on Thursday. Email can now launch new programs, as long as they don't grow faster than the growth cap they've both agreed to. This growth cap will be lifted after 12 months, as long as email can prove it is executed on all of their remediation items CBI has requested of them. Email was up 32% on Thursday. Fisher & Paykel Healthcare released their first half 22 results last week, with revenue and profit 4% and 13% ahead of consensus expectations respectively. Fisher & Paykel was up 4.6% on Thursday, however gave much of this back on Friday, falling 3.5%. Crown Resorts also received another bid from Blackstone at $12.50 per share. This compares to two previous bids from Blackstone of $11.85 and $12.35 per share. Looking to the week ahead, the key focus will be on the Omicron variant, as we look to better understand the implications of a new strain, its transmissibility, and the vaccine's effectiveness. In terms of economic news, the market will closely watch US Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's speech to get a sense of how the Fed views inflation concerns in the US. The market expects no change to the current policy rates. We also have non-farm payrolls data to be released on Friday, with the market expecting 550,000 new jobs to be added in the US, with the unemployment rate expecting to fall to 4.5% from 4.6%. In Australia, we have the September quarter GDP to be released on Wednesday. The market is expecting 3% year-on-year growth, a slowing from the 9.6% achieved in the June quarter. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.